Fear Not, Episode 76. Hi, I'm Billy Atwell, and I believe that consistently facing your fears is the only way to realize your truest self and to make those confident choices that will help you to obtain your deepest held hopes and dreams. I have faith that this podcast series will show you that you are not alone, that it will strengthen you and give you courage to face your fears, and that it will help you to permanently cross over into a life of living beyond your fears. Join me on this journey as we listen and learn from others as they share their experiences in facing and overcoming their own fears. Hello, everybody. Today, you and I are going to be joined by Dr. Robin Miller. Hello, Dr. Miller. How are you today? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing well, thank you. Are you ready to fear not today? I hope so. (laughs) Dr. Miller's career as a physician has been quite varied. She currently is practicing internal medicine and serves as the medical director of Triune Integrative Medicine, a highly innovative integrative medicine clinic in Medford, Oregon. She is also the medical reporter for KOBI 5, the NBC affiliate in Southern Oregon and Northern California. She has produced the award-winning health series, Is There a Doctor in the House?, which is shown on the Wellness Channel nationwide. Her health smart tips are seen regularly on sharecare.com and realage.com. She's also even been a guest on the Dr. Oz Show. Her most recent book is Healed, Health and Wellness for the 21st Century. Dr. Miller, can you take a few moments to fill in the gaps and maybe also give us a brief glimpse of your personal life? Yes. I've been a practicing physician since 1979. And at first, um, what I did was uh, urgent care and internal medicine, and then switched gears about 10 years ago when I opened up my integrative medicine clinic. Um, which is a lot more fulfilling for me because I get to actually spend time with patients. It's a very patient-oriented approach where I'm partnering with patients to help them be well, which is what prompted me to write the book that I wrote with my co-author, Dave Kahn. Um, I live in Medford, Oregon. I've lived here since 1991. We moved from Long Island, New York, a really big difference. (laughs) And um, I've never regretted it. Um, I have two sons. They're grown. Both of them live in L.A., and both of them are somehow affiliated with some form of media. And um, right now, I'm totally enjoying my practice and doing all kinds of varied things with media, medical reporting. Um, I have a radio show, and I've really enjoyed writing. Well, thank you so much for sharing. Dr. Miller, would you also share with us today one of the biggest fears that you've had to face? Well, I think the biggest fear, I mean, when you asked me the question initially um, by email, I had to really think about it because there have been many. Um, But I think the biggest fear for me was in medicine when I went from medical school to internship where I shifted from student to actually having to take care of patients. And that for me was frightening, the idea that I could somehow negatively impact someone's life really kind of scared me and at first paralyzed me, Um, but I got over it. And by working hard and asking lots of questions and finally gaining confidence that, you know, I wasn't going to harm anyone, (laughs) that actually I was helping them more than anything. And um, so that is sort of how I got over that fear. And in fact, I remember during my internship, this moment where I thought about walking out the door because it was so hard and terrifying and someone actually did it. Someone in my internship actually just walked out one day and I remember thinking I could do that, but I didn't. I'd worked too hard and I cared too much about the people I was taking care of to do that. And after I had that moment, I was fine. So you just made a decision? It was a a mental decision not to do that? That's what you did? Yes. Yes. And I just persevered. So what do you do when you face other fears? Do you take the same approach or do you do something differently on a case-by-case basis? Well, I've worked really hard at becoming more grounded in myself. So I've done quite a bit of meditation. I do it twice a day. 
Um, I work with someone who's really helped me turn my thoughts around, like from the inside out, where I have more ability to not be attached to things. And if you're not attached, then you're no longer afraid. And if I do get afraid, I just tell myself either feel the fear or do it anyway, or on the other side of fear is freedom. And once I think that, I'm okay. But when you re- when you actually get through it, you realize, oh, I'm really glad I did that. That was a really good thing. I'm going to take a guess here that you've probably read Susan Jaffe's book based on what you just said. No, I had <laughs> Really? The whole that's the title of her book. It was uh, Feel the Fear and Do It Anyway. No, I didn't read it. <laughs> okay, all right. Well, good for you nonetheless. Um Thank you. In that vein, you must have come across some resources that have helped you. I know you've talked about meditation and and just sort of mindset. Is there anything that you could share with us today that we might be able to use and implement into our own journeys dealing with fear? Well, there's actually a book. Um, it's by Viktor Frankl, Man's Search for Meaning. I don't know if you've heard of that book. Um, it's amazing. And this is a man who made it through the Holocaust and realized that if you can find meaning what in whatever happens, it's worth it. And that basically love conquers all. And I look at him and think, if he can do this, I can do this. I mean, there's really not that much to be afraid of when you look at what it is you're facing. And we can all make it through. So I think meditation helps. Talking to someone helps. um, Looking at how other people deal with it helps. And just doing it, just going forward, even if it's something you're afraid of, is okay to do. Giving yourself permission. Are you ready for the speed round? Sure. What individual, whether fiction or real, has made the most impact on your life? Well, I think it's Viktor Frankl, um, reading about what he's done and listening to what he has to say about life and how it's important to follow your passion and love and look at meaning and getting something positive out of things that may not be positive on the face on the face and face value that he has inspired me as a figure more than anyone else if you could instantly change one thing in the world what are you going to change <laughs> can i get political on this you can it's whatever you want yeah president i would change the president <laughs> I would get Hillary back. That's what I would do. <laughs> What's your biggest weakness? Um, I worry. Worry is my biggest weakness. I worry all the time. What's your biggest strength? Um, my biggest strength is my ability to persevere and push myself through things that are uncomfortable. And um, I think I'm very compassionate and empathetic and have a lot of empathy for patients. And I think that's a big strength. And if you could only have one book to read, what book would that be? Um, it would be Man's Search for Meaning. And do you have a favorite sound? Oh, yeah, Baby's Laughing. That's my favorite sound. I had to think about that one. I love baby giggles. And if someone would like to connect with you, Dr. Miller, what's the best way for them to do that? Well, I have a website called wellhealed.net. I also have another website, tryingmed.com. So either way would be a great way to get in touch with me. Um, And on the wellhealed.net, you will find our book and an easy way to buy it as well. And what parting advice would you like to leave with us today? Um, My advice would be uh, that it's important to be accountable for your health which means healthy eating, exercising, healthy lifestyle. Um, And it's important to have fun. And if you look at our book, you'll find out that it's really important to dance. Dancing is the key to good exercise and a healthy brain and a healthy body and a healthy spirit. That sounds like excellent advice. I want to let everyone know, too, that Dr. Miller has generously donated a copy of her new book, Healed. So if you would like to have that opportunity to win that book, go to the giveaways page at livingbeyondyourfears.com and submit your free entry form today. 
Dr. Miller, I want to thank you so much for coming on the show today and spending time with us and sharing your story of overcoming fear. Great. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Thank you for joining me today. And remember, you cannot achieve everything, but you do have the God-given ability to achieve anything. So stay focused, out of fear, and keep on keeping on. Until next time, be well and peaceful. For more information on today's episode and guest, or for resources that will assist you in overcoming your fears, visit livingbeyondyourfears.com. And don't forget to subscribe to this podcast, where three times a week we move to a life beyond our fears.